മേലത്തോൽ അഗ്നിഹോത്രി എക്സെപ്റ്റ് ഫോർ വൈല കുന്നിലപ്പൻ ദ ലെവൻ ചിൽഡ്രൻ ഓഫ് വരരുചി വെർ ബ്രോട്ട് അപ്പ് ബൈ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് കപ്പിൾസ് ബിലോങ്ങിങ് ടു ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് കാസ്റ്റ്സ് അറ്റ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് പ്ലേസസ് ബട്ട് ബിഫോർ ലോങ് ദേ വെർ ഏബിൾ ടു റെക്കഗ്നൈസ് ഈച്ച് അതർ വൺസ് ദേ റിയലൈസ്ഡ് ദേ വർ സിബ്ലിങ്സ് ദേ ഡെവലപ്ഡ് എ ഗ്രേറ്റ് ഡീൽ ഓഫ് അഫെക്ഷൻ ആൻഡ് എ സ്ട്രോങ് ബോണ്ട് അമോങ് ദം സെൽസ് ഈച്ച് വൺ ഓഫ് ദം വാസ് ഗ്രേറ്റ് ഇൻ ഹിസ് ഓർ ഹർ ഓൺ റൈറ്റ് ആൻഡ് പ്രോസസ് ഡിഫൈൻഡ് പവേഴ്സ് Except for Vaila Kunnilappan, all of them used to assemble at Melathol Agnihotri's illam to observe the death anniversary of their parents. Agnihotri would invite a Brahmin priest to assist him in the religious rites. Agnihotri was brought up by a Brahmin couple, so he lived a Brahmin's life. His sister Karekyalamma was brought up by a Kshatriya couple. Since his brothers belonged to lower castes, the Brahmins hesitated to cooperate with Agnihotri to perform the religious rites for his deceased parents. Even his Andarjanam wife was unhappy over this. One day, she openly expressed her displeasure. He just nodded his head and did not say anything. Shortly after the incident, his brothers and sister assembled at his illam to observe the death anniversary of their parents. Reluctantly the Brahmin priest also came with his assistants to participate in the rites Agnihotri had arranged 10 temporary bedrooms for his brothers and sister After supper he led them to their respective rooms At midnight after he made sure that all of them were asleep he took a lamp and led his wife and the Brahmins to the rooms In all the rooms where his siblings slept they saw Lord Vishnu in his real form with the conch the discus and mace and the lotus in his four hands sleeping comfortably on ananta one of the eight divine serpents the andarjanam and the brahmins were stunned by the sight and repenting they paid obeisance to each of them the illam of agnihotri can still be found at ponnani a village in malappuram district of kerala kadampur a nambudri family based at ottapalam is related to agnihotri There is an interesting lore about the famous deity Trithalappan related to Agnihotri. One day in the spring time his wife went for a bath in the river. She was carrying a platter with her. She cleaned it, heaped some sand on it and kept it aside before taking a dip in the river. After she finished her bath she went to take the platter. She was surprised to find it stuck to the river bank. Immediately news spread and people flocked to have a glimpse of the heap of sand on the platter. Astrological indications later revealed the presence of Lord Shiva in the platter. So the platter was consecrated at the river bank along with the heap of sand on it which had hardened into a green stone. Later a temple was constructed there. Naranath Brandan Though an eccentric, Naranath Brandan, another son of Vararuchi, was divine in his own right. He had his own and very unique ideology about life and worldly activities. His main hobby was to roll big stones up a hill and then leave them free to roll down. He might have wanted to teach the world some valuable lesson about human life. He lived the life of a vagabond and earned his living by way of arms. It was his habit to make a hearth wherever he went in the evening, cook some gruel, have it and sleep on the same spot. At daybreak he would again be back to his game of rolling stones. In the afternoon he would go begging. At dusk as usual he would settle down wherever he had reached. One day at dusk after his usual routine he reached a cremation ground. The pyre was stuck burning there. He took a small pot from his rucksack and filled it with water from the river nearby. He then made a hearth and began to cook a meal. There was a pain on his left leg which was swollen due to dropsy. He stretched his leg and kept it comfortably close to the hearth to enjoy the warmth of the flames he began to hum a folk song as he watched the rice boiling in the pot as the night grew darker and darker he heard some fearsome noises clinks and clanks it was chudala bhadragali the goddess of cremation grounds and her demons on the nocturnal rounds they were surprised to see a human sitting with a dauntless expression on his face staring at them Who are you? Bhadrakali raised her voice. Can't you see? I am a human. People call me Naranath Brandan, he replied. Clear off immediately, she ordered. Why should I? he retorted. 
If you don't leave the place, we will scare you away. She made frightening gestures. I am not afraid of anyone. Leave alone you. He said with a sarcastic smile. We are different from others. She yelled back. Go ahead and do what you can, he said, leaning against a tree. Badrakali and her demons charged at him with their fierce eyes flashing like embers, their canines shining like swords and their blood-red tongues coiling like serpents. But Naranath Brandan sat there fearlessly with a non-callant smirk on his face. Badrakali was astonished by his behavior and soon she and Naranath Brandan indulged into a conversation as thus. Naranath Brandan, is that all or are you trying anything more to frighten me? Badragali, oh great soul, I think you are not an ordinary being, so I plead you to go away from here. It is our privilege to engage in Tandavam, a sort of dancing in ecstasy and merry making at the cremation ground at night. Naranath Brandan, you may carry on with your dance and whatever it is, I will not disturb you. Badragali, but we are not supposed to dance in the presence of a human. Naranath Brandan. In that case, you may entertain yourself tomorrow. I will not budge from here. Badrakali. We cannot postpone our activities. Naranath Brandan. You need not. You can start dancing right now. I will sit in a corner without disturbing you. Hours ticked by. Badrakali went on requesting him to leave, but he would not budge from where he sat. Ultimately, she had to give in. Badrakali. O oh, great one, we are leaving, but I cannot leave without either blessing you or cursing you. Since I am convinced of your greatness, I will only bless you. Tell me, what boon do you want from me? Naranath Brandan Nothing, please. I don't need your blessings. Please go away with your friends. My meal is ready. Allow me to have it in peace. Badragali Please don't disappoint us. Unless I grant you a boon, I won't be able to go back. Naranath Brandan to help with you and your boon. All right, then tell me, when will I die? Badragali, you will die after 36 years, 7 months, 2 weeks, 9 days, 5 hours and 3 minutes from now. Naranath Brandan, all right, grant me one more day in my lifespan. Badragali, I am sorry, I am unable to grant that boon. Naranath Brandan, then take away one day from my lifespan. Badragali, I am helpless again. Naranath Brandan, irritated. That is why I told you I don't need your favors or boons. Badragali, please have mercy. Ask for any other. Naranath Brandan, if so, grant a boon to shift the swelling on my left foot to the right foot. Badragali, so be it. She blessed him and disappeared immediately with her retinue. Immediately, the swelling on his left foot got shifted to his right foot. By then, it was daybreak. Naranath Brandan got up and left happily for the hills with a swollen right leg. Once, Naranath Brandan was on his way to participate in the Shraddham, death anniversary of a low caste. He had a friend for company. After a heavy lunch, they returned. On their way back, Naranath Brandan felt thirsty. I too feel thirsty, said his friend. After a while, they saw the workshop of a brazier. The workers were melting bronze in a furnace. Naranath Brandan went straight to the furnace, took a handful of molten bronze and drank it. He asked his friend also to quench his thirst by drinking the molten bronze. I cannot. If I do so, I will die for sure, said his friend, taking a step back. Then you are an outcast. If you are trying to emulate me, you should do so sincerely. With these words, Naranath Brandan left his friend. Naranath Brandan had a fancy for ants. It was one of his hobbies to watch them moving in arrays and count them. One day, he was sitting in a corner counting the ants when a man came to him and asked, How many have you counted? Naranath Brandan did not raise his head. Ten thousand gone, another ten thousand to go, and all will end well, he said. Without bothering even to look at the man, the man was intelligent. How does he know that I am suffering from stomach pain? How does he know that I have spent 10,000 coins for my treatment? How does he know that I have kept another 10,000 to continue the treatment? All these thoughts flashed across his mind. But he was sharp enough to grasp the message behind Naranath Brandan's words. He went ahead with the treatment and spent the remaining 10,000 coins and was totally cured. Even today, the memorial of Naranath Brandan attracts tourists to Rairanallur Hills in the district of Palakkad in Kerala.